So today we did something pretty interesting. Uh, this year, my uh, oldest daughter, her science fair project is why is Lake Houston look so money? And uh, so we went over to the Cedar Landing uh, across the bridge on 1960 on the Huffman side. And uh, we went out there on their docks and we, we got to pull a, a, a water sample kind of from, you know, an area that's off the bank on the main lake. So it's not, uh, you know, it's affected as, you know, as a, as a river and creek, something with a lot of flow coming through it. So we got to get a nice, you know, main lake sample. And we brought it back to the house and we filled up these settlometers. And we're just going to let them sit for about a week and uh, see what the changes are day to day. And uh, for this first one, we went ahead and filled with just raw uh, lake water. We didn't do anything to it. We just filled it up and we're going to let it sit. On the second one here, we put uh, about a half tablespoon of alum in it. And we're like, so we're just going to watch and let it sit. And over here, a half tablespoon of lime and a half tablespoon of gypsum. Um, I know they're probably, you know, way over treating these, but we weren't really trying to see exactly how much we need to treat Lake Houston with to fix it. We're just trying to see what, what it'll do to it. Um, but pretty much we're doing the raw so we can find out that if in a week this goes clear, then we know that uh, there's something that's agitating or a mechanical reason why the water is uh, muddy looking. You know, there could be lots of different factors, you know, erosion, uh, um, even even certain types of fish that feed on the bottom, like the muddy of the water up. I mean, there's so many different causes that could be from, you know, agitation. But in a week, if this doesn't settle, then we know that, oh, it's more in the chemical makeup. And that's where these come in, in place. You know, with alum, you know, we have to, well... We'll have to go back and, and uh, we're going to run a water quality test on this as well to find out, you know, what the pH is and the alkalinity because that determines which would be the better, you know, remedy. You know, with alum, alum, whenever you treat with alum, it, uh, it actually lowers the pH. So if the water in the lake is already low in pH, we don't want to make it lower. And make it too acidic for the fish and the plants that uh, need that uh, you know more neutral water type and same thing uh, you know with the lime it's the opposite so if we get you know the test back from the Lake Houston water and it's showing that it's uh, you know already high in pH then this is just gonna make it even higher so you know we kind of want to we want to buffer it you know if you're gonna add something add something that you know, is gonna make it closer to uh you know seven in that scale so and the gypsum is pretty much that's the neutral that's the one that if the water test come back and it's already at seven we want to use the gypsum because it doesn't affect the ph as much and uh so you know we're just gonna you know take it day by day see what the changes are and uh you kind of record them and i'm interested to see what we're gonna find out too now it's been a, it's already been a couple hours since we added it so you can see the uh Water is already changing on some of these. And I hear that brown there is caused by these are more granular, um, you know, granular, granular lime and granular gypsum. So that brown is from the coating that they put around it to, to hold it in place to make it granular. So, but uh, like I said, we'll, we'll see it, you know, see what happens day to day. And you know, I'll keep y'all updated until next time.